Hi everyone, welcome to Type Talks. Today we have a typing session demonstration where I give you a glimpse into how I conduct my typing sessions. I normally have another person typing with me when someone purchases a typing session. So we both give our independent assessments of your type. So if you would like to support the channel, feel free to purchase a typing session. I hope you enjoy this video where we will be typing an ISTJ named Mark. So without further ado, here's the video. Nice to meet you, Mark. What brings you to the world of type? Um, I suppose it's just a little bit about self-discovery. Um, so just, yeah, trying to understand um, what makes me tick a little bit better and how best to interact with people based on that. That's an excellent reason to dive into type, yeah. and. So I'm wondering, what do you love to do so much you would only stop at a sheer exhaustion? Otherwise, you would continue on indefinitely because it gives you energy to do whatever you're doing. <laughs> um, for me, it's probably um, a lot of the time it's working, I think. Mm -hmm. So that's probably a, a big one, a big driver in my life. Mm -hmm. um, so I work in sort of construction as an engineer and it's pretty demanding. Uh, it's on-site sort of base work and... Uh, uh, big hours and big money <laughs> and uh, yeah so it's uh, yeah fairly demanding from that perspective for sure. Amazing and what about it gives you energy? Um, I think I like the idea that every day brings its slightly different challenge like it's fairly dynamic um, fairly dynamic environment and I also enjoy that it's it's very much problem solving based as well. What about problem solving really gets your juices flowing? Um, I think it's just the satisfaction of working through something from start to end. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. so there's all those sort of uh, variables and then slowly working through it, um, you know, to achieve something that's, you know, suitable, uh, not only for myself, but, you know, whether it's a client or, you know, the company, however that sort of sits, yeah. Mm. Is it the outcome you're focused on then, or is it more like the process of figuring it out? Yeah, I think outcome. Yeah, it's probably like in my mind. I've, I think I've always got a bit of an idea about how I want to go about achieving something, mm. but so it's probably it's probably. But also in saying that, I've always fairly, I've always got a reasonable idea about the process to get there as well. Mm -hmm. um, probably doesn't answer your question very well, but yeah, I'm not not hundred percent sure how that sort of yeah how that drives me to be honest. Mm. <clears throat> Is it more like like tinkering with stuff and figuring out like why it works and having to know like not just like okay, I can do this, this can work great, I can replicate that every time this comes up. Is it like? having to know why and the nuance of like the problem itself and stuff like is that satisfying um yeah for sure yeah sort mm. of deep diving very niche can be um sometimes for sure yeah and so mark i'm wondering what rules you more your head or your heart uh probably definitely the head for sure mm. yep. Yeah. yep yep Can you give me an example um just feel like I sort of I'll put myself in situations where um, maybe other people would be sort of a uh, little bit sort of sort of whinge or moan or whatever else. Whereas I just feel like I sort of like I, I often just sort of roll the sleeves up and make do. You know, it's not particularly enjoyable or whatever, but I'll I'll get through it. Uh, and, and in my mind, that sort of yeah, I think that's a bit more sort of yeah, a bit more head related sort of you know trying to work through that uh reasonably objectively instead of yeah with my heart <clears throat> yeah that makes sense do you ever get days where like you don't feel like it and it's a real effort to put your feelings aside to just get the job done and you feel like you could just be overwhelmed by your feelings and bask in them and not want to do stuff or yeah, I do get that, but that's like very, very rare for me. Like that's mm -hmm. yeah, that's very occasional. Like it might be once or twice a month, sort of a thing. In my mm -hmm. mind, it's sort of yeah, it's very occasional. Yeah, <clears throat> that makes a whole lot of sense. 
with one of Anne's questions, you mentioned how you tend to like the outcome of things. Mm -hmm. um, that's what you said, right? Yep. Yeah. So what is your relationship with end outcomes and working towards end outcomes and following through with the projects that you start? What is the relationship? Yeah. Um, what is your relationship with following through with ideas, projects, things? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'd probably say generally most things that, that I start get finished. There's, there's not that many things that don't. Um, and that sort of a lot of that satisfaction can come from just purely finish them, finishing them. Mm. Even simply like just having a great big list of like a list of to do things and just working my way through that, that, that feels really good just working through that. And mm. particularly if it's um, getting smaller every day instead of getting larger. <clears throat> Hopefully that sort of clarifies a little bit. <clears throat> that clarifies a lot. Yeah. How much do you plan in your life? Do you plan a week ahead? How far do you look? Um, uh, I'd probably say like fairly near future for the most part. Like uh, realistically, yeah, it's weeks and months instead of years, I'd say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. When you go into a situation, do you like to know what to expect next or do you like to have freedom and room to improvise? Um, I like I like to have some level of preparation, uh -huh. for sure. Yeah, and some level of understanding. Mm -hmm. And there's a that brings me a little bit of that sort of comfort, knowing that it's similar to something else that's previously been done. <clears throat> that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So you mentioned things that have been previously done. What is your relationship with? tried and true methods or things that have been shown to work. Yeah. So a lot of the time that's sort of my default point for trying to work through something that's new, trying to find that sort of similarity with something that's previously, you know, I'm aware of or been involved in or had success with using that as a basis to then manipulate that from there. Yeah. Can you tell us a time where you've done that? I would say like that's like very common at work. Like there's things that I've seen previously, and yeah. So when coming across you know um, technical issues with construction and things like that, working my way through that sort of stuff, it's um, yeah a lot of that sort of basis of that first hand knowledge. That's a great skill. And so, and do you have any questions you'd like to ask? Yeah, just building off of that, do you tend to keep like? Um you know, step-by-step -step process templates and things either from yourself that you've created or other people as like a starting point for when you need to do a new task or a, or a task you've done before? Uh, not really. I must admit I'm probably like not super um, diligent with the whole uh, sort of formalising it, writing it down, doing all that sort of stuff. A lot of it's mm -hmm. just sort of kept in my head, really. Um like uh, I'm definitely like there's there's some people that very clearly with like Microsoft Excel and playing around and doing all these amazing things with it, but I just sort of I, I do the bare minimum to make it work to a certain level. Mm. It doesn't sort of particularly yeah that sort of systems and process development doesn't really interest me besides it helping me to you know work through something. I suppose, like there's no real joy for me in sort of yeah, playing around with Excel or doing all that sort of stuff or coming up with a new system or process or whatever else necessarily. <clears throat> mm. Are there any areas in your life where you like a bit of novelty, you know, like work or play or? Yeah, mm. I'd say, um, I'd say, I'd say outside of work, work's quite um, to a point, fairly structured. There's also a lot of freedom that comes with that to a point, but yeah, outside of work, um, try and get away and do a whole heap of different things on the weekend come that time where that mm. sort of like a little bit of, little bit of travel or um, different activities and things like that. Um, it's obviously then a little bit harder with the COVID stuff, but yeah. <clears throat> yeah. How's your work situation changed with COVID? Like, um, like much, not at all. Can you get out on sites and stuff? Kind of um, so I've been pretty lucky, really. Um, here in Australia, it's um, I'm working for the government on on a, on a highway upgrade project. 
Mm. And um, basically that's classed over here as an essential um, work. So mm. it's um, they sort of see it as like a really good economy sort of building thing. So it's one of those few, few things that they still let sort of run. Um, so for the most part, besides some sort of fairly minor um, sort of rules and regulations on the site itself, it's pretty well business as usual for the most part. Yeah. And so, Mark, what is your relationship with routines? Do you like routines, hate routines? Um, yeah, I like routine. Um, but if I see a better way from that routine, I'm always willing to adapt it for sure. So I don't try and get too stuck in doing something for the sake of doing something repetitively. <clears throat> for sure, definitely. And... So do you have any particular ways of doing things, like a particular way you like your eggs or a particular way you, you like a certain object to be in a certain place? Or so Yeah, I can be, I can be quite, um, uh, I suppose, like fussy with like the set out like of a bedroom or something like that, or even just like the cleanliness of the kitchen, that sort of stuff. Like there's sort of, it'll get to the stage, yeah, if it's just like too messy or whatever, it's just got to be all cleaned up and sort of tidied up. It's got to have some level of order to it. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. And so what happens if that order is not there? Um, yeah, good question. I'm just trying to think how best to verbalise that. Yeah. It's probably, I don't know, I suppose there's almost like, I suppose, a feeling that it's just sort of, I don't think the word's un uncomfortable necessarily, but it's just sort of the environment's sort of, not where I want it to be, I suppose. Mm -hmm. like you can't relax until it's sorted and tidied up and stuff. Yeah, that's that's Same. that's not a bad that's not a bad sort of direction to take it. Like, yeah, it's sort of I feel a little bit maybe maybe the word's not satisfied, but I feel a bit better about it after it's sort of at that sort of I don't know standard of cleanliness again, for instance. <clears throat> yeah, like say you're going to like watch a film or something that evening would you be way more comfortable like tidying up the kitchen and stuff first and then watching the film and thinking, oh, yeah, that, that can just wait. I'll just watch my film now because that's what I want to do kind of thing. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So the former, yeah. 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 Yeah, got it. Yeah. It's like an itch you can't scratch until it's like fully ordered and it's like it feels better. It feels. Like yeah. <laughs> I don't think uh, maybe it's a bit OCD. I don't really think it's sort of that sort of bad necessarily but yeah 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 it, it's kind of like it's taking up an unnecessary mental real estate until it's done and finished yeah that, that's not a bad idea yeah for sure yeah yeah, yeah. it's very I, similar like at work if i've got like whole leopard drawings and plans and things all over my desk and there's like a big task i've got to start to undertake it always feels better to sort of throw throw away things that aren't no longer relevant or just sort of tidy it up a bit before getting into it again mm -hmm. <clears throat> Mm. Do you think at work, like, you're able to think clearer then if your desk is a bit tidier and stuff or if stuff's organised? Yeah, for sure. Yep. Yep, 100%. Yep. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. And so how are you, like, at work? Yeah, good question. It depends who I'm around, really. Um, but can be can be fairly quiet, fairly serious. But there's also another side to me where I'm sort of uh, the biggest joker in the room. Where I sort of uh, hold court a little bit and sort of uh, poke fun at others, and yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, how would your coworkers describe your sense of humor? Uh, dry, very dry sense of humor. Yep. I like it. <laughs> that's really amazing. Yeah. How would your coworkers explain getting to know you? Like, what would be their first impression of you and their impression of you now? Um, I think, yeah, I'm always very, very slow to open up to people. So mm -hmm. I'd much rather sort of metaphorically sit back a couple of steps and just sort of suss everyone out a little bit and sort of figure out who's who in the zoo and then sort of work from there with it. Um, so, yeah, probably at the start, people would sort of um, come across maybe a little bit aloof, a little bit cold, a little bit rigid. Um, and then I think it sort of... Um, takes them back a little bit when I start uh, cracking a few jokes and sort of poking a little bit of fun because it's like such a change in direction <clears throat> for them to yeah. see. Mm -hmm. You seem like a really fun person to get to know. Yeah. And so I was wondering, 
are, are you a type of person who likes to finish work before play, like work before play? Or are, are you more work as you play? Like, are you more chillax about that? Um, I'd say it's probably more work than play. Yeah. 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 I feel like I can relax more once I feel like I've achieved whatever I wanted to set out to achieve in any given day or week or, or period of time. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Do you ever mm -hmm. set goalposts for yourselves or objectives to reach? Yeah, for sure. Yep. Yep. So yeah, personally and professionally for sure. Yep. Oh. Yeah. How do your goals typically look like? Um, a lot of, so a lot of my professional goals are just sort of maintaining various sort of like um, engineering accreditations. Like here in Australia, you need to have, you need to be like a registered engineer to make, um, uh, you know, make essentially make decisions that, you know, can have great effect on structures or roads and all that sort of stuff over here. Um, so a lot of my goals are to do with, a lot of my professional goals are just sort of maintaining um, like chartered professional development and things like that, basically making sure I'm still sort of current with what's sort of happening in the industry a bit. Um, personally, um, I must admit, yeah, one of my one of my goals this year, I've started to learn a little bit of Spanish, so just um, a little bit different, but um, just something that sort of seemed a little bit interesting to try and learn a different language. Um, so, yeah. That's really awesome. Yeah. Keep the brain young to learn different languages. You're doing a great job, a great service to your, your mind. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. So, Anne, do you have any questions? <laughs> um, yeah. So, like, you know, at work, you say that in a new situation, say, like, you're new into a job or whatever, you hang back and observe people. Yeah. Like, um, do you feel like you're observing, like, the social structure a bit more? Like, who's the most popular person? What's appropriate to say? What not? Um, who's, pe whose feelings have I got to watch out for treading on? That kind of stuff. Or is it more, like, hierarchical? Like, you know, who do I need to treat with deference? Who's actually the one in charge making decisions here? Um, you know, what, what kind of things do you look for? Yeah, good question. Um... I sort of feel it's a little bit of both, to be honest. Mm. I can sort of see, like, because, um, as I was sort of saying, because sometimes my humour can be quite dry, you need mm. to be particularly careful about who you sort of target or that sort of stuff. Um, <laughs> so I can sort of see that side of it. But also um, understanding, yeah, if I need to get things done, who do I need to see? You know, who, who's sort of, who's a bit of a prime mover that can, mm. you know, potentially assist me later on if I have an issue with with a certain thing. Um, so, yeah, I can sort of see a little bit of both out of that, to be yeah. honest. <clears throat> Makes sense. And do you kind of um, things like knowing who's good for what job and, yeah, sort of like what task to allocate to what person or what person's going to be good to to go to for a certain thing to get done? Like, is that is that? Yeah, 100%. Thing? Yeah, so I, I try and, like, build up a bit of a vibe about what people are sort of good at and bad at and sort yeah. of filter it through them <clears throat> for sure cool and so mark how did your childhood look like how was child mark like and how is he different from current mark <laughs> um yeah good question i think um very very shy very reserved um and probably also like very sort of had a bit of a mentality like the world's a big place and like it's 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 a bit scary like the whole thing's a bit sort of a bit too much i think um i think i think the big difference really then and now is that i'm a lot more self-confident and a lot more self-reliant that i have the tools and things to you know work my through work my way through whatever it may be whether it's personal or professional or however that sort of sits yeah that's great. Developing that sense of self-reliance. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. And so, Mark, what are your pet peeves in people? What gets you frustrated about people? Oh, a big one to me is if you say you're going to do something, please do it. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. 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 So it's people who don't keep their promises or don't keep their word? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What other things annoy you about people? 
probably just like the the timeliness side of things as well. Like if there's a meeting on at ten o'clock, chances are I'll be there a little bit early. And my expectation is is that we will be having that meeting at that time, sort of a thing. So yeah. It's sort of like very common nowadays for people to turn up 10, 15, 20 minutes late. And it's like, oh, so I'm just supposed to sit here and just wait, sort of a thing. You know, <laughs> my time's not as val valuable as yours. It's pretty well what you're, what you're trying to say to me. So, yeah, things like that. It's just like, yeah, I suppose that sort of boils down to the respect side of things. <clears throat> I hate it when people are late too, when, when they're really late. <laughs> like when they're, it's like, hey, I planned the, this time so I would be on time. And, and mm. so I would maximize how I would use this time. And then now you're not even here. And it's like, wow, I just wasted all that mental energy into For sure. Like, yeah. Pressuring yeah. us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so, Anne, do you have any questions? Um, yeah. Like, how well do you cope with like change and curveballs being thrown at you? Take that as broadly as you want. And in it, any yeah, way. it's a um, yeah. really good question. I, I feel like it's one of those things that probably maybe. I've gotten a, a hell of a lot better at over the last probably like in the in the in the nearer future last couple of years I feel a lot more comfortable with it but it's still something that um, there's a little bit of unease there for sure um, it's one of those things yeah there's there's sort of that 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 little bit of unease about future you know how that sort of future will pan out um, but yeah I've sort of I don't know exactly how I've sort of changed my mentality a little bit, but it, it it's nowhere near as sort of um, daunting or anything anymore. It's just sort of, it's just, I, I tend to be a bit more glass half empty than glass half full <clears throat> with, sort, with things. Yeah, makes sense. And do you think like part of that is because, um, you know, compared to when you were like a, a child or a teen, you've built up a lot of life experiences and things have shown you that you can cope with some change and yeah. stuff. Like yeah, for sure. So, get, yeah. The less newness there is in a way. Absolutely, yeah. The more experience, it's um, a sort of, yeah, you, you tend to realise that you'll sort of group people, you go, oh, that person's similar to this person I've met, do this, do that, da-da-da. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, this experience I've had previously... I can rely on this, you know, I can manipulate this experience and it's a fairly similar sort of um, problem or, you know, something I'm working through. So, yeah, for sure, the older I get, it's probably it's probably could be as simple as that, just more experience to sort of draw from. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. And when there's no experience to rely on, it can be hard to trust a, a, like an extremely new thing that is, I guess, not comparable yes. to any other experience. A hundred percent, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah for sure and so with your experiences I, i'm wondering mark are things more enjoyable the first time around or the second time around so let's say a movie or visiting a place is a movie more enjoyable the second time you watch it or a place more enjoyable the second time you go to it like i don't know disneyland or wh whatever place <laughs> um <laughs> yeah i think um i think Depend, depending on what it is, like if it's something that's fairly foreign in terms of experiences for me, I'll probably enjoy it more the second time around than the first because it's, mm. you know, it's going back to sort of drawing off something that I know or being better, at, like I've probably already processed it the first time around, so I'll be a little bit more comfortable sort of doing it again the second time. Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of like movies and things like that, I must admit normally I just sort of watch a movie once and that's it. I don't normally re-watch movies or TV shows or anything like that. It's, yeah, so. Yeah. And so would you consider yourself a creative person? Ah, uh, no, definitely not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No. I, no. Yeah. I don't, don't particularly see that at all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What is your relationship with people who are a little strange or a little weird or a little quirky? <laughs> Um, it takes me a little while to sort of warm up to that. Um, mm -hmm. like that sort of like that if they've got those sort of like nuances to them. Um, generally, yeah, for me to sort of open up to them, it's trying to find a bit of common ground, like shared experience. And mm -hmm. if we have something there, you know, I'm happy to sort of just base that relationship off that. But if there's no, there's nothing even remotely similar, I'll probably, yeah, really struggle. And sort of, yeah, it probably wouldn't go out of my way to sort of necessarily deal with them <clears throat> any more than I had to, really. 
Interesting. So in your um, about you section at the end of the survey, you mentioned about like being a person that people come to for, I can't remember the word you use, you know, like help or advice or, you know, people close to you come to you to help mm. sort out their problems and stuff. Like, like what does that look like? And I guess to give you like some pointers, like, is it more practical? Is it more emotional? You know, like, yeah. Um, yeah, generally practical but like yeah just things they're sort of working through for sure um but also emotional too people sort of come up and just sort of drop all this stuff on me you know what i mean and they walk away feeling really good you know after 10 minutes of sort of you know um hitting me with all their you know their worst worries that it's just um yeah they're all happy that it's like yeah okay right i've got this now yeah yeah when you say i've got this now do you like holding other people's burdens or do you not like it so. Oh, no, not, yeah, it doesn't particularly, not at all, yeah, I must admit, yeah, it's, um, um, it sort of sits with me for a little while to sort of work through, I suppose, <clears throat> that sort of, all that, all that emotion. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, they're like offloading their emotion on you. And yeah, it, yeah, it, I sort of feel, it, I normally feel a bit drained afterwards. Yeah, yeah, it lingers in you, yeah. 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 Yeah, because I sort of like I sort of regurgitate it and reprocess it and work through it. Yeah, yeah, you post process through what they've said. Yes, for sure. I can have that sort of stoic side to me. People are sort of quite happy to sort of blurt out all that all that sort of stuff. You know what I mean? And it's it sort of yeah, mm -hmm. um, yeah. It seems like you're a safe person to tell things to because you don't seem to emotionally react to them and you have like that stoic, I don't know, people can trust you for that reason. Yeah, yeah I think I think it could be a little bit of that for sure. That's amazing, mm. yeah. yeah. So they don't come to you for that emotional back and forth and so you can like, I don't know, both moan about a person or something like that. Is it more, I guess, the things that Joyce said? Yeah, it's all one-way traffic really. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, it's their chance to sort of yeah get whatever it is off their chest. <clears throat> and you're just like, okay, thanks for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, do you tend to like know how you feel about things quite a lot? Uh, not at all. Um, particularly trying to, oh, yes, in the sense that I can feel it. But mm. no, in the sense of that, I can put a put a word against it. Mm. Oh. Trying to verbalise what it is. Yeah. So I'll I'll feel a certain way, but I wouldn't know which word to use to describe that feeling necessarily. Do people ever view you as like stoic and unfeeling when inside you might be feeling very deeply? Um, yeah. So like, there's a lot of the time like I'll completely be like very very annoyed at work over something that's happened that's not of my doing or that i've inherited to basically fix the issue or whatever and i'll be completely over it and people wouldn't have a clue that that's the case mm -hmm. that i've completely got the shits with with whatever it is that yeah um so yeah for sure yeah, and you feel like that's all sort of very internal, like you just have to go away and sort those feelings or process yep. them or let them yep. work through you on your own kind of thing. Correct. Yeah. 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 yeah that makes sense. And it's and it's always like post process to sort of ruminate over um conversations or things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, I've got you. And so how often do you look back at the past, Mark? Oh, pretty well every day always like I always sort of there's always like a, a period of time that I'll be going over a conversation or an interaction or, or whatever it's just just what I do I can't yeah I can't stop it it's just yeah that makes a whole lot of sense yeah hmm. what what do those conversations look like yeah I'm curious <laughs> um a lot of it's just sort of almost like replaying things over in my head and just sort of working through uh, almost like, yeah, what, working through what, what could have been changed potentially about that sort of, you know, interaction or dialogue or whatever it was. That's a really productive use of looking back. Yeah. 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 Amazing. 
Yeah, it's it's one of those things though that I can get into a stage where it's almost like analysis paralysis mm. and I just like too much rumination and it's almost whether it's work or outside of work or whatever else, I just need to do something. And like it doesn't really matter if it's not the perfect answer. It just like some some sort of progress or something needs to be done to get back to, to doing again because I can sort of stall in that sort of thinking and, and, and planning and yeah and the sort of the non doing side of things as well a little bit on occasion. Yeah. Yeah. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah. yeah. And so Mark, have you ever felt like an alien in your life? Given that everyone is a unique individual, like, have you ever felt like you were fundamentally different in some way, like fundamentally different than everyone else? Yeah, for sure. Yep. Yeah. 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 Because yeah. uh-huh. uh-huh. yeah. you go a little bit into that. Oh, I just particularly like the emotional side of things, like we were sort mm-hmm. of discussing before, you know, it's all one-way traffic, but people seem very sort of willing to sort of push all their stuff on others, you know, that's not really at all the case for me. It's sort of, yeah, a little bit sort of like that side of it. And I'd say things like um, even just like um, people can get like very worked up over things that I sort of see like fairly trivial Mm -hmm. um, in terms of, you know, they're sort of, oh, we've got to do this process or we've got to do this or we've got to do that now. And it's, you know, I don't really see why there is such a big deal behind it. I mean, it's not that difficult to do sort of a thing. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So people kind of like work things up to be bigger than they actually are. And that's what. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. 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 But in saying that, like I, I appreciate like there's some value for people and like it makes them feel better. Just like blowing off. Oh, this is, yeah. This is rubbish. This is crap. Ra 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 ra. That, that sort of little yeah. two second whinge, and then that sort of yeah fixes everything again. Yeah, <clears throat> that makes a whole lot of sense. Yeah, what you were saying just made me think. So like, and I wondered how you like, you'd if you'd react similar to this to me. But like when I worked in an office, one of the things that like was really strange about a lot of the people was they were all kind of like living in each other's pockets, like socially and emotionally. So they would need to like talk through like who they liked who they didn't like you're smiling um you know like they would all be trying to get each other on the same page as with like a thing they would like have routines where like you know it would be a certain person's turn to make the tea and they've got to make everyone a tea you can't just go off and make yourself a cup of tea and I just used to be like this would be so much easier if you just kept to yourselves and just go and get a drink when you want it You, you know (laughs) <laughs> that was the kind of thing that like I was just thinking I bet I bet you'd hate that <laughs> yeah 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 all that sort of stuff yeah it um I don't know maybe maybe I'm maybe I'm a little bit too black and white but I sort of try not to intertwine the work and the play mm-hmm. side of things like in my in my mind they're two very discrete things and that's sort of how I try and run them but yeah 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 you're the type of person who likes to separate business from personal, like feeling yeah. type of thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think it's um, it's almost like uh, there's sort of two me's. Yeah, you know, one during the week, and then there's one during the weekend a little bit. <clears throat> yeah, and so you mentioned how you tend to replay certain memories you have. How vivid are, are those? How vivid is it when you replay memories? Uh, v- very, very. And pe- people have always said that I've got a really good memory. They're really surprised at things I can remember. Like just everything. It just seems like I remember everything. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Which is, it can be a bad thing because I, I I can hold grudges based on things, you know, mm-hmm. many, many years ago. And people go, oh, you know, they probably wouldn't even know about it or remember it. But, um, yeah, a very good memory. <clears throat> yeah. Fantastic. And so I'm, I'm wondering, do you ever make the same mistake twice? Like when you make the mistake one time, do you tend to figure out how to prevent that from happening again? Or do you tend to accidentally make the same mistake again? Um, generally, generally, it's very much if I've made it, I'll try and rectify that the next time around for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
So, yeah, fairly rare. Or it's like a very minor mistake that I'm okay with making multiple times for the sake of just efficiency. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. What is your relationship with efficiency, Mark? Um, yeah, that's, that's probably, that's probably one of the biggest things for me, trying to, trying to be as efficient as possible. Um, so that probably, like we were talking a little bit before about like, um, you know, systems and processes and Excel and all this sort of stuff. And that's, that's a little bit a part of it. Like I, I just want to do things enough so that they work mm -hmm. and, and more than that. And I'm really comfortable with that, you know, as long as, as long as the system or whatever I do works to a certain level, that's, yeah, that's my ultimate goal, really. <clears throat> mm. Are you quite good at knowing, like, how much time, like, different tasks will take and things like that as well? Yeah. 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 I've got a very good appreciation of, yeah, task management for sure. Yeah, yeah, you seem like a natural at that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wish I had it, man. <laughs> yeah. And so, Mark, what is your relationship with leadership? Uh, leadership, yeah. So um, I've sort of, I must admit, I've been a bit on like a bit of a fast track professionally. Um, so I lead up a team of about half a dozen people, um, so other engineers and we call them uh, and like um, uh, like construction foremen. I suppose you you'd, you'd probably like those sort of people as well. Um, so yeah, it's it's one of those ones. Um, I've sort of only really been sort of getting into that sort of leading other people over the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. um, so still a little bit new to it, but it's something that I enjoy. I enjoy the challenge of less doing now but working through other people to achieve things mm. <clears throat> wow you are a force to be reckoned with at work <laughs> <laughs> your reverse allocation skills are top notch <laughs> yeah and would you consider yourself a person who's relatively down to earth and pragmatic or a person who has their head in the clouds <laughs> Yeah, I, um, oh, no surprises. Yeah, pragmatic, down to earth. That's yeah for sure. And I think that's even, it's even why I've probably ended up in the in in the industry I have. You know, so engineering it's still technical, but it's also because I'm I'm construction site based. It's sort of you know dealing with people and things and, and problems and issues and all that sort of side of things. Yeah, awesome. And and so I'm wondering, what is your tolerance for abstract conversation? That doesn't really have practical application. Um, yeah, there's there's a certain level of tolerance there, but it's probably to do with how much I can sort of see the relevance to, yeah, tying it back to something really. Yeah, I must admit, yeah, it sort of wouldn't really interest me hypothesizing and there's no sort of outcome or there's no sort of result tied with that. Yeah, that makes a whole lot of sense. <laughs> you mentioned before, Mark, how you were a glass half full type of person. Can you go into that? Uh, no, I, the opposite, actually. Glass half empty, I'd say, really. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah for sure. Yeah. So, yeah, so the, the, there's, that, there's that, always that little bit of pessimism. Yeah. For the unknown, yeah. for sure. Yeah. 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 Oops. <laughs> okay. I love I love that Joyce said it that way because I wanted to see how Yeah, yeah. yeah. I felt like that was a test. I felt like she did that deliberately too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's all a test, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, what causes the pessimism? Oh, it's just the unknown. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 It's just the the yeah, the lack of surety about what will occur. Mm, yeah. 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 Would, would you say you have a fear of the unknown? Um, uh, I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't probably label it that strongly, but yeah, there's sort of, I don't know, I suppose it's just like an underlying 
pessimism with the future. Yeah. 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 I, I like to be, I like to be prepared and yeah, I like to, yeah, I like to, I like to feel in control of it. So as much as I can. Yeah. And when you feel this sort of pessimism towards the future, what does it cause you to do? Um, probably sort of just like work through that internally a little bit. It's sort of just like, yeah, sort of planning, like scenario planning, I suppose, really trying to work through if this happens, cause and effect, what will occur from there sort of a thing, I'd say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, do you ever like wildly see more negative possible scenarios and stuff coming up than actually happens? Yes, all the time. I'll always future proof a far more negative outcome, like the worst outcome or one of the worst outcomes compared to how it could be. Yeah, always. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You like to know the origins of things. So when someone is saying something like, where that's coming from or like the origin or history of something like the context or like what they're trying to achieve with that potentially yeah, yeah. for sure yeah yeah i think a good case in point is me sort of yeah even bringing up like oh did you did you ask that deliberately the, the wrong way around but like things like that just to try and understand motive a little bit <clears throat> mm. like when you're asking about the glass half empty stuff yeah 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 so that makes a lot of sense so when something, so when something n new is happening, or that seems like it might have potential negative things attached to it, like a part of you is trying to figure out like what is this trying to achieve, and the second part is like figuring out like where the motive is, like correct for the change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like another good example is Joyce keeps on saying like, "Oh, that makes sense," and it's like, "Well, that's great. That makes sense to you because it's not making a lot of sense to me at the moment." So I'm looking <laughs> forward to the clarifying bit. <clears throat> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> you want you want to get that outcome. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You're trying to predict the the outcome. <laughs> yeah. What I got from the last thing you said as well is that uh, would you say you sort of like consciously or unconsciously are looking for people's intentions behind statements they make and actions they take and stuff Correct. as well. Yeah, mm. yeah. Sometimes I don't just take people at their words. I'm sort of looking at like a motive or or what they're trying to achieve, yeah, mm -hmm. with that for sure. Yeah, like there's a part of you that's kind of like scanning for manipulation. It's, it sounds a bit jaded, but... It does, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I must admit, talking about myself makes me sound very jaded, but yeah. <laughs> no, but I, I, I do that as well. It's like you're trying to read, like, what does this person actually want from me? Are they trying to get me to do something? Like, what, what's, like, where are you coming from here? Are you coming from a good place? You know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It's always good to to suss out people's motives. And <laughs> yeah. um, that made me think actually like how are you with like reading people in general? Like you um, sort of take a person in and sum them up kind of thing inside yourself? Yeah, I feel like I um for the most part I feel like I sort of summarize people fairly quickly. Mm. Mm -hmm. And most of the time it's pretty close but then every now and then I'll get someone and go oh that's a bit different like they've said or done something later on down the track and I'm like oh I wouldn't have expected you to act that way and mm. that's sort of not so much shocking but it's more just like a, oh okay that's yeah that's not quite how I've sort of pegged that to be yeah mm, yeah I was thinking as well like I just want to like test something out so what you were saying before about like past experience and changes and stuff um so I had like an analogy that's like come up in my head when I've profiled people that I think like are using certain processes and stuff. Mm -hmm. How much do you relate to like when you get a new experience, you're like shuffling through like a deck of past experiences in your mind and you're looking for one that fits or is similar. And then if there isn't one that fits, that's where like the the worry and the problem comes. Um. Yeah, possibly, possibly. I feel like that would happen very quickly internally, though. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Like I feel like I'd, I'd know very quickly whether or not I've dealt with that or something similar to that before. Like very, very quickly. Like pretty well instantaneous. Yeah. 
I can imagine as well, is it quite visceral for you if it comes up and it's a new one and it sort of sends you into like a spiral of, oh God, I haven't had this before. I've got to start playing for scenarios and stuff. Do you sort of, does that emotionally impact you quite a bit? Um, no, I'd say probably what it more does is I probably would become, externally I'd probably become a little bit more withdrawn. Mm. that's probably like people would go oh like it'd be the, the classic like taking one step back to sort of try and find mm. that sort of overview of it <clears throat> mm-hmm. yeah yeah makes cool. a lot of sense so well, to clarify because you're wondering why like i'm saying oh that makes a lot of sense it's like a it's an impulse i have so it's basically like an an fe thing that i do and i like i i, I want to say that i'm listening basically that's 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 my my motive when I when I say that. Like it's just like to affirm you that mm. I'm I'm paying attention to what you're saying. That's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're act, you're actively listening. Yeah. <laughs> For yeah. me, it's more like it's more like okay, this is this is fitting in with like. Yeah, that's stuff. how I took it. I was like, oh, okay, yeah. yep, tick that box, cross that box, yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is affirming you, and I'm just like, uh, okay, they're like he's fitting into this, so he's fitting into that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not telling you why, yeah. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> it's good that you brought that up, though. I, <laughs> that's pretty funny. Um, uh, and anyways, um, hmm. any other questions you want to ask? Anne? Well, yeah, you say you've had, got, like, a core group of, like, about 10 people. Um, have you had, like, the same sort of friendship group for a very long time, have you? Or... Um, so they're, they're different friendship groups, but a mm-hmm. lot of them are sort of built up. Yeah, they're sort of people I've known for a long period of time for sure. It's generally the way. Cool. Yeah, I don't think I have any more questions, um, Joyce. Great. Um, I guess a question I have for you is... I ran out of questions too. <laughs> <laughs> the question I have is that I run out of questions. Um, do you feel like um, you, you you have enough to feel solid? And mm-hmm. okay, cool, cool. Put, put, put Mark out of his misery. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're, we're sorry. <laughs> yeah. So for these typing sessions, we tend to give our independent assessments. So Anne came up with the result on her own, and I came up with with a result on my own. And we're going to tell you what we saw. Yep. Yeah, and then we're going to ask you about it to see your thoughts on it, too. Yeah. And so, Mark, I believe you to be an ISTJ, and here are my reasons why. <laughs> yeah. So for introversion, you know, you explained how at work, you know, you're seen as a reserved, shy person, and that this has been continuous since you were a child to now, like you tend to seem like you're holding your cards close to your chest, and you're kind of private, and people kind of notice that, and and so I believe you to be an introvert, uh, because I believe that you lead with the process introverted sensing, too, Mm -hmm. because you'll mention how you ruminate on the things that you replay, and it can stop you from taking action, too, and with ISTJs, they tend to be more ruminative than ESTJs. So they're more likely to go over their, their SI past experiences that they've built over time in a more ruminative way or a more mulling over way than an ESTJ would. And you mentioned that element a lot. And my reasoning for sensing is that you mentioned how you're realistic, you're pragmatic, and you you are okay, you can tolerate abstract conversation, but you tend to need to link it back to a practical application or a practical practical insight from it, which is more on the sensing side too. It's just also the SI um, with the liking the second time experiencing a place more than the first time, which is more SI too. So that's one mm-hmm. of the reasons why too. And so think thinking. So the reason why I believe you're a thinker is because it seems like you lead with your head with things and the strong extroverted thinking with things. You mentioned how you are effortless with knowing who would be good at what task and how much time it would take to do a certain task. 
in basically how to allocate people and resources into the right roles so that it creates a maximum efficiency and effectiveness. Yeah, you talk about how effectiveness is one of the things that are like the most important to you and how you have these objectives and milestones that you're trying to reach and that there seems to be like a system to the way that you do things. You like things to be finished. Yeah, and those are all effectiveness things. And even the way that you organize your house. So you mentioned how you like your your place to have like order, like, and that is also a form of TE2, ordering objects in your environments for the most effective and efficient outcomes. It's very TE, down to the way that you you create your house. Yeah, so that's why I think you're a thinker. And with the judging. So you tend to follow through with most things that you commit yourself to, which is a trait of judging. And you also mentioned you, these, these are stereotypical traits, but it, for some people they are true. And for, for you, it tends to be true. It's the coming to these meetings or these things that you set with your friends on time or early. It tends to be a judging trait too. So when you mentioned how your pet peeve is people who come really late, that's like the stereotypical clash between the judger and the perceiver doesn't apply for everyone, but it does. I do see it applying for some people. And you also mention how you, you, you can't relax until you've, you've done the thing and then you can relax more fully. You, you, you talk about, you know, you'd rather finish that task on your mind and then do the play. And, and that's more enjoyable than to play before everything's done. Yeah. Yeah. yeah which is more of a stereotypically judger thing uh, because they, it's almost like you can't relax until things are finished. It's also a TE thing too. Um, it's the pessimism with the unknown that you have that makes me also think you're a J too because ISTJs tend to talk about their inferior extroverted intuition and how it'll cause them to have a glass half empty type of mentality. So they'll almost like forecast the negative scenarios before they happen. And they'll forecast even more negative scenarios than what, what it actually happens. So it's almost like they're using that any brainstorming possibilities type of superpower, but using it in a way to plan for the worst or to imagine yeah. the worst. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You mentioned this element of contingent, con, contingent, uh, contingency planning as well, which mm. is really associated with judging too. You're like, you you have a plan for your plan if the plan doesn't work out. So that's something when you're talking about the worst case scenarios, I, I remember you mentioning how you prepare if, if that will happen too, which is, yeah, contingency planning. Yeah, yeah. especially yeah. ITJs, like they love contingency plans, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> that TE, yeah, just on top of it. And so, Anne, what was your read off of Mark? Well, I was thinking ENFP. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, de definitely um, ISTJ. Um, yeah, so like the TE was, was yeah, pretty obvious pretty soon. Um, yeah, and like the SI, just the amount of like mastery of SI of like whether it's like your own past, like, you know building up experiences over time um you know understanding like precedent and things should be done the right way and that kind of thing um yeah um I could see like a lot of your FI as well like it's it's funny because like ISTJs and INTJs like they don't really like that and they don't like other people spotting it and they don't like talking about feelings but like you guys like almost always know how you feel about something and that's like quite strong FI, like a, like an ESTJ or an ENTJ, like doesn't know all the time. It's yeah, yeah. When you mention Mark, how when people will open up to you about their 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 issues, it can sometimes feel like they'll linger on with you for a few days after. When people come on my panels and they're FI, that's what they tend to say about when someone tells them something it'll weigh on them. Yeah, yeah. Because FI has an element of internalizing feelings too in, in, yep. a, in a really like holding on to way. Yeah. And when when you mentioned Mark, 
people might describe you as stoic, but inside at that moment, you might actually be feeling something that people aren't noticing. Hmm. It, it tends to be a very ITJ thing. It tends to be anyone on the FITE axis will say that, but yeah, that, that is very FITE. <laughs> Yeah, and you feel like you're kind of like happier, just just like oh yeah, just let them think that I'm not feeling all this stuff on the inside. That's easier for me anyway, kind of yeah, thing. 100%. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Totally yeah. 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 agree. Yeah, because with that higher up extroverted thinking, you kind of want to appear like a good resource to other people. You don't want to seem like you're showing too much things that could make you seem like not a good resource. <laughs> so I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, but you're like you're in touch with your feelings enough to get those days when you know you just don't feel like something, and it's a real drag to like push those feelings aside, yeah, yeah. And, and get on with it. But most of the time, you're kind of good with getting on with it, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. The higher up TE is extroverted thinking, the easier time it will have with getting things done, even if it's not feeling that way. Mm, like a kind of like okay me and everyone needs to put their feelings aside so we can get this thing done then we can feel good because this thing's done is yeah. kind yep. of mentality yeah yep. feel yep. good later <laughs> yeah. yeah work before play yeah very much yep. <laughs> Absolutely. yeah <laughs> yeah the pessimism piece also makes me think istj too because on a whole istj's are more pessimistic than ESTJs, generally. The reason for this is because ESTJs have higher up extroverted intuition. So what will happen is they like, they don't lead with a sort of pessimism with new things because they're all, they're like, ah, they're more accepting of that. Whereas for the ISTJ, there will be more of that uh, glass, half em glass half empty with practices that haven't been proven yet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like they lose some of the deep dive, but like the tertiary any means they can problem solve in the in the moment a bit, um, a bit bit easier with a bit more comfort and stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes a whole lot of sense. No, I didn't mean that to like <laughs> be logical about anything. That was just my affirmation impulse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How is this all resonating with you, Mark? Yeah, mm -hmm. no, it's um, it's exactly what I thought it was going to be. To be to be honest, so yeah, not too not too surprising. More just confirmation, I think, really. Excellent. Um, hmm. Yeah. 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 So like, started off with like all those sort of online quizzes and things like that. No, kept on getting like fifty percent of the time we get INTJ, and then fifty percent mm -hmm. of the time we get ISTJ, and then like I sort of dive more into the whole introverted extroverted functions and that's sort of when in my mind it became a lot clearer about istj as opposed to intj just sort of fit a lot better yeah what sold you on istj i'm curious i think it was just that si sort of yeah that that just sort of really fit really quite well mm -hmm. and also like they that the any in the in the inferior Mm. is always sort of seemed to be a bit like negative and that just sort of yeah another like that sort of yeah th those sort of two things yeah sort of made it feel like a better fit for me yeah 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 I'm wondering what parts of the SI description fit the most um just like the routines and all that sort of yeah and oh, and particularly like the the playing back of information like the, mm. the sort of the reanalyzing side of it. I was like, oh, that's definitely, yeah, that's definitely something I do for sure. Mm -hmm. That is so cool. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really interesting, especially that like liking something better like the second time around. So like a couple of months ago, I did like a um, mountain bike route for the first time. And it was um, my first time doing like, like big steps so you have to yep. make sure your body positioning's right and stuff oh it sounds like you know like a little bit about a little about bit that. yeah rock hopping yeah. and that yeah 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 and so like the first time I didn't know this route and I didn't know what to expect so my husband forgot to tell me about like a section of it and that there was like this technical bit in there so the first time I just did it and like I was, I was on it and I was like okay I guess I'm doing steps now this is just happening and I just seemed to somehow do it 
But when it yeah. came to it again, that first time I just knew I could do it because I was doing it at the time. But yeah. the second time I actually had a little bit of anticipation because I was like, oh, okay, I, I know what this is. It was yeah. really weird. The fact that I'd done it once without being prepared gave me no comfort that I could do it again but yeah right yeah 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 it's so interesting hearing you say like the SI way that you get more comfort the second time because mm, in- you know what you're in for yeah that's how I yeah. sort of see it anyway yeah it's sort of yeah yeah whereas you probably wouldn't have done it had you known it was there <laughs> yeah maybe or I just I, yeah I don't know but it was mm. just it's a really interesting contrast as well mm. between like those types yeah yeah right. yeah, yeah. There's a question where I asked you, do you tend to learn from your mistakes? So when I interview SJs and SPs, here's the difference. With SJs, they tend to say like, when they make a mistake once, they tend to want to figure out a way to plan against that. Like, so they'll try to prevent it by SI, trying to build up the experiences to make sure that doesn't happen again. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas for SPs, that's not always the case. Sometimes they will make mistakes over and over again. <laughs> but it's because SPs don't retain past experiences. And I think yeah. that's what Anne was trying to show. Like the second time she goes through the path, it's it's like she didn't take away any. Uh, okay. Yep. yep. Yeah. Yep. The, SI user, the SI user will take something away from it. Yeah. Okay. My ISTP friend uses this example. She, she has like this pan that she gets burnt in the same way each time, but each time she accidentally burns herself on that pan the exact same way. And her ISTJ, he's like, how do you not learn from your past experiences? <laughs> yeah, that's the difference between SJs and SPs, man. <laughs> oh, definitely an SJ then. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> yeah mm-hmm. yeah it sounds like you figured out the kind of like itj hack of like actually there's a comes a point when you need to step into action as well um because yeah you pretty much mentioned word for word like perfectionist procrastination and that's like such a intjs and istjs both do it for slightly different but the same reasons because they just want to stay inside their like SIFI or whatever perfecting something um and they don't want to act until they've got it all figured out and stuff in their heads um yeah yeah, <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. so it's cool hearing you say that yeah yeah well it was very like ITJ about you so ISTJs and INTJs both do this is like when I will say something you will think to yourself what is this trying to achieve which is so so like T-E <laughs> to ask, like, what is it trying to achieve? <laughs> and then your FI, your introverted feeling is like, what is her motive behind this? What is her intention? Huh. <laughs> which, is, which is what Anne was mentioning too. <laughs> she relates to that. Um, can you go hmm. into that, Anne, and why you relate to that? Um, yeah, I don't even know why, because I guess a lot of this is unconscious for me, but yeah, it's like there's a part of me that's always like looking out for like if people are trying to like I don't know if like get one over is the word or manipulate or what's what's their intent or reason behind doing this. So like an example that comes to mind is that when I managed a team full of people, um, like I did like a roughly the same hours every day, but they had all kinds of different shifts. Um, so the office was like open eight till six but I didn't work every day eight till six because there was people doing different shifts and it would mean that I'd work more hours than I need to so say for example like I'd roughly start at half eight finish at half four and um you know people would like try and get me to do things like as I was finishing because I think in their minds they were like oh okay the manager's leaving I better ask this question that I have so that like I can get on with these bits and pieces while she's gone or you know what if I forget tomorrow stuff like that and um if they asked me I'd be be like thinking to myself like why are they asking me now is it that they've genuinely forgot are they trying to keep me behind for some reason um and this one woman um yeah this one time she she asked me and I could tell that she was trying to manipulate me because she was saying like 
because I said to her, I said, oh, like, I've got to get off. Like, unless you can, like, unless we can get this sorted in a minute or less, this has got to wait for tomorrow. I want, I want to, I want to lug off. And she goes, yeah, but if you tell me the answer, I'll be able to get this thing done. And she, it was like she was trying to manipulate me by, by a task being done. Hmm. And that's not necessarily a good or a bad thing, but that's just like one really random example. But I'm kind of scanning for that kind of thing in people all the time. Like, like, what, what are you trying to get out of this kind of thing? Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Here's my question. Is FI trying to scan for if someone is trying to use them for some sort of TE aim? Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Am I speaking English? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to... I'm trying to think. So... Maybe where it differs from me to Mark, and I'd be interested to hear your point of view, but I guess to me there's an element of, of like, with that FI being high up, I don't want someone trying to control me in any way. And because I'm a very different personality type as well, there's that kind of, like, backseat NI paranoia of, like, what are they trying, like, are they trying to get into my head kind of thing as well with it that comes along with it, I think um yeah what's what's your experience with what joyce said mark yeah i think um very similar actually yeah Mm. very very similar Uh, yeah for sure very sort of skeptical of of yeah people and what they're trying to yeah what they're trying to do yeah because like going back to that that example with that lady i was like I came to the conclusion that, you know what, I'm going to give her some time, even though I know she's trying to, like, find the thing that she could say to me to make me stay and help her for a few minutes. She just wants to, like, be good and get the job done and stuff, and I'll I'll give her that bit of extra time. So it was kind of like what was going through my head was, like, I know what you're doing here, and I know how you're trying to get me to say yes, Mm. but but I'm okay with the reasons. So, (laughs) yeah. 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 So you felt like, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't all, yeah. It wasn't all just their win. You had a bit of a win too, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'll give you that one kind of thing. Mm. (laughs) Fascinating. I just wanted to dig deeper and deeper into this. (laughs) Are you both able to think of another, like another reason why you both look into motive motivations and other people? Yeah, maybe maybe it's because I'm a little bit pessimistic about things. I'm trying to test to see if that's eventuating or not. Oh, it's if that the, makes sense. Yeah, it's the FI before syndrome. Yeah, I notice FI users tend to mention how they've been burnt by people in the past, or like they've trusted people and they've like they've had something negative happen to them, or like there's some sort of broken trust or some sort of like they gave their heart to someone and it was used in a wrong way or I don't know so it's basically something what I'm trying to say is that there's something that made the FI user jaded where anyone could get jaded right but I noticed this story comes up and up again with FI Um, and because they've been burnt before in some way they're pessimistic or jaded or wary or there's this type of protective layer before like trusting people's intentions or motives. But I don't know if that's completely true. Maybe you guys can verify, say no, up to you. (laughs) Yeah, for me, I think it's been like, when I have like shared emotional stuff with people, I haven't expected them to then go and dissect and analyze it with other people in an FI, in an Mm. FECI way, like, oh, can you believe she said that? Or she feels like that. And you know, I wouldn't do that to somebody. I I can't even imagine a scenario where I would like, especially if both sets of people knew each other, where I would go and like share someone's emotional experience, Mm. analyze it in a negative way or even a positive way. That's just a huge like way to break trust in my opinion, like going and basically telling everyone like, you know, your deepest, darkest (laughs) feelings and secrets and all that sort of stuff. And then, yeah, sort of working through that, processing that with other people like that, yeah, not at all would would I see that being okay for sure. Yeah. So it's very almost sacred when you share that emotional experience that you don't tell many people to a person and then they go 
share yes. with people. Yeah, yeah. If I if I if I open up and become vulnerable, I don't want that shared with everyone. I shared that with that person and that mm. person only. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> wow. <laughs> for me I don't care if I tell you something about me you can tell whoever you want you can analyze it however you like it doesn't feel it doesn't feel as personal when I share like emotional things with people oh wow it feels one of many that's what it feels like. okay yeah hmm yeah, that's interesting because like when I've worked in like an office and I worked in a very sort of like um, ISFJ heavy team and like a lot of them didn't really want to be there, but the job like paid decent money and stuff. So there was a lot, it was very easy for them to like become like more negative versions of themselves at work and stuff because you know, they didn't really want to be there and stuff. And um, yeah, there was just, I would see them like do that like to each other or like they'd cat or I'd catch wind that like they'd done it to me and it, I just found it so horrible yeah mm. those are the kind of emotional situations that I would just like stay well away from mm. yeah. yeah 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 and I, I just used to think like what would it take for me to like talk about somebody and their and their emotions and what they're doing and their life choices and stuff in that way just like yeah no yeah just sort of yeah yeah. Wow. No, I completely agree with that. It's um yeah, it's sort of it's almost difficult enough to sort of process my own emotions, let alone dealing with other people's and getting involved with their sort of drama and their sort of yeah, their sort of soap opera. Mm, that's interesting. So for me the processing is definitely easier. And I think what used to happen was I would just kind of like be myself and, you know, like wear my heart on my sleeve kind of thing, like more mm. than like an ISTJ would and so that left me open to more judgment so I would have more of those kind of experiences of like sharing myself and then finding other people dissecting yeah. it kind of thing yeah because yeah. I'd just be accidentally sharing myself all the time when I was very young yeah mm. Mm. yeah Mark do you have any questions that you'd like to ask us uh not at this point in time no no yeah and so I facilitate the MBTI and I have reports on each of the 16 types. I will send you the ISTJ report after this. Perfect. And you can read through it. You can do whatever you want with it. It's yours. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And it's a pleasure to meet you, Mark. Yeah. And no, thanks so much for your time. Yeah. yeah. Nice yeah. to meet you too, Joyce and Ian. Yeah. 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 Really nice to meet you. I had fun. <laughs> it's a pleasure to meet someone who follows through a lot with their word has integrity but then when i when i interview istjs they, they tend to talk about that about how they stay true to their word they have a lot of yeah. integrity with it yeah very dutiful high integrity and just diligent amazing citizens of human society so thank you for, no, for thank you. One of those people with extremely high integrity yeah yeah it keeps the world like not burning <laughs> that's what i always say yeah it's yeah you're one of the like the stand-up samaritans that create a better place in the world because you you follow through with your word so it might it might seem like an everyday thing for you like you're just so used to keeping your word but that built up over time it creates a foundation for society to run properly and also it creates a trustable person who who will not burn you who will not leave you burn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why that's why you've had your friends for such a long time. You know, you've had that circle of friends for a very very long time and that's because you're you're trustable. Yeah, and, and you just flake off, yeah. 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 But also like it's about like putting in that effort over that period of time too, like mm. keeping that connection going and that's like one thing I'm always very much the one that sort of reconnects with people like the, mm -hmm. those friends and things like that it's always like on my behalf that you know like let's catch up let's do this let's do that and sort of keep that connection going mm -hmm. yeah yeah and so you're very consistent with your effort when you've decided you care you care and you're just yep. putting in the effort that's amazing yep. yeah so it was a pleasure meeting you mark well yeah you too yeah. thank you we'll see you around 
Sounds good. Yeah, also, I wanted to ask you, Mark. So this is recorded. It can either just be just for you. So I can just send you the recording and it's just like, uh, it's going to be a private link. Or if you if you allow me, if I can post their typing sessions on my YouTube channel, but you can say no and I will never post it. Like I Yeah, I don't mind. Yeah, it's all good. Awesome. Go for it. Hey. Yeah. That's all awesome. <laughs> <My birthday. laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the first one I end up posting, so maybe that's will make your FI feel special. I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for giving me permission. Yeah, yeah, all good. Yeah, it's nice meeting you as well. Yeah, and you too. Now you met a fellow FI friend and the ice. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Yeah. And I was just thinking, you're probably going to tell nobody. If this ends up on YouTube, you're not going to tell anybody that you know, are you? No way in the world would I do that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> Anne's married to an INTJ, a fellow ITJ, so she knows the drill. She knows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little bit, She's well yeah. versed. Yeah. Oh, very good. Yeah, yeah. So it, it's always great meeting ISTJs in the community. If you ever want, you can be a part of my panels too. So if you opt in, then I can always invite you. If you opt out, like I, it's all chill. It's all chill. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that sounds good. That sounds interesting. Yeah. Awesome. For sure. Yeah, and you can meet ISTJs in the community too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So pleasure meeting you, Mark. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Thanks so much for your time. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll see you around. Take care. See you. Bye. Bye.